Now, the most powerful role players in the field of basic education, including government, trade unions, business and non-governmental organizations, came together at the South Africa's presidential guest house recently to launch a clear plan for joint action to improve education. Joining us now to discuss the effort to achieve the education targets set out in the National Development Plan is Susan Masana. He is, of course, the CEO of First Rand and the chair of the committee that steered stakeholders towards the National Education Collaboration trust. Now, Caesar, in this very chair, a few weeks ago, I had uh, Professor Jonathan Janssen and I posed a question to him that said, has the education system failed in South Africa? And so to you, I say, is this initiative a response to a failing system? Well, it's a response to the challenges that we face in education, which in fact uh, have been aptly identified in the National Development Plan. But what's important is that, uh, you know, there's a lot of a lot of achievements that have been done in education. If you look at, for instance, access to education in right. South Africa, we we'll now home almost have 100% access to education. There are a number of areas where there have been improvements. Uh, if you look at the past results for matric last year, they certainly show an improving trend. However, there's a lot more that needs to be done to increase the quality, to improve the quality of education in the country. But we have to concede that one of the unique things about South Africa's educational system is that there's a plethora of NGOs, each doing their little bit. What does this trust and this initiative bring that's different and that has not been seen on the educational landscape? Well, there are a number of things that are different. For starters, it's the first time that you have all the stakeholders that have some or other thing to do with education that are involved where we've created a platform for all of them, companies, NGOs, citizens, as in parents, as well as government, working together to address the issues in education. Secondly, it's true that it's not only NGOs, but even companies for that matter. You know, companies in South Africa spend in the region of between one and a half billion to three billion rand in education, but each company does its own thing. There's no collaboration really, and therefore the ability to change the system, to improve the system is limited mm -hmm. to the extent that each company is doing its own thing and NGOs do their own thing. So it was in this regard that this national education collaboration framework was created to then create the trust that will create a platform which says for everyone who wants to work in education, uh, here are the rules and here are the guidelines, but also more importantly, we are able to pull resources together to really work with government, to try new innovations, to fix what doesn't work, uh, but obviously also try and make sure that at the end of the day, we don't get government to abdicate its responsibility right. to provide education. I mean, I, and I, I want to really jump onto that point of government abdicating on its responsibility. What should we read uh, from the fact that a key figure from the private sector is at the helm of one of the key service delivery elements of government, uh, putting together a, a trust and steering a committee to deliver on education? Well, government still runs the education system. Mm. And I think it's important to acknowledge that, and we're not trying to replace government. What we're trying to do is to support mm -hmm. government's initiative. And if you look at the National Development Plan, it clearly says it requires active citizenship. You know, all of us as citizens in the country need to come together to support government. And education has been identified as an apex priority mm -hmm. in the country. And it calls for all stakeholders to work together. So this is why we responded to that call, which is in fact a government call, to say, you know, how, how, how can we make sure that, you know, government is not the only party, for instance, that has a responsibility. Parents have a very important role to play in education. The youth have a very important role to play in supporting government's initiative to improve quality of education. I mean, to a large extent, since where the private sector has always bemoaned that uh, funding education or deploying their CSI spend to education has been like throwing money uh, into a bottomless pit. How are you ensuring that through this particular initiative that there is a uh, return on the investment that the private sector uh, puts in and that this centralized funding model is going to work better than uh, each private company identifying a school and uh, you know throwing the little bit of CSI spend they've got towards that one small niche area. Yeah, one of the important elements of how we're going to succeed in the National Education Collaboration Trust is to make sure that there's a very strong accountability structure. So if you look at the structure itself, we've got unions, government, private sector, NGOs, parents, as well as senior citizens or citizens in general in the country that are involved in helping and, and supporting government. And it's important that as we get involved in education, each of the key stakeholders right. is accountable for what they have to do. 
you know, so business, for instance, is not just about uh, mobilizing funds. It's also about, you know, making sure, for instance, that companies can make available the skills in areas such as project management and so on, uh, but also processes and systems that have worked very well in the private sector and can make those available to the public sector. And it's quite important, obviously, that as we do so, we can measure what we do. Right. So we're using evidence, we're using monitoring and evaluation. We've identified, you know, not all the whole country, not all the 26,000 schools in South Africa. We're going to be starting in eight districts, which, you know, represent something like uh, two million, you know, children yes. uh, or 4,000 schools, which is where we're going to, you know, start looking at what needs to be fixed, what doesn't work as it should, and fix that, working with government, by the way, and also start to innovate and, new, and introduce new ideas of learning and teaching, of pedagogy, of training teachers and so on. Before I get uh, into the monitoring and evalu evaluation um, details, I want to just talk about the eight districts that you have uh, uh, notated. Is your focus on secondary schooling is a combination of primary and secondary schooling and what informs how you've gone about selecting those eight districts? Well, the intervention is aimed at at, at all the schools. In other words, primary schools from the foundation phase, the intermediate phase, and high schools. And the districts have been identified on the basis of a whole assessment that's been done that identifies where the need is, but also where there is leadership that is able and is ready to receive interventions. Because it doesn't have to go to areas which you know, may be so broken, especially in the earlier part of the interventions. So we've identified, you know, eight districts that have the ingredients to receive the interventions, right. uh, you know, that range from just making sure that, you know, that teachers, uh, the principals in schools, the books are there. We've redesigned some of the learning and teaching material to delivering those, uh, to looking at infrastructure and so on. So let's go back into the monitoring and evaluation capacity. I mean, I think this is probably one of the areas where government needs uh, strengthening in terms of capacity to monitor and evaluate. Which institutions within the educational space are you seeking to work with as you help government to strengthen its capacity to deliver, especially in the monitoring and evaluation space? Well, there are a lot of NGOs or implementing partners that are in the country today. Mm -hmm. that have been working in the space of education, but maybe sometimes working in little pockets, working on their own, and in sometimes in an uncoordinated fashion. So what we're trying to do through the NECT, the National Education Collaboration Trust, is to bring all of them together to identify those that have the capacity mm -hmm. to do the work that's required. But I think it's very important for us to, to really acknowledge that government and government officials, including teachers, district officials, and so on, have a responsibility to run the system. So we're not trying to replace the people who are, to, who are there, who are running education today. What we're trying to do is to support them. To a large extent, um, uh, the, the document speaks about uh, strengthening the professionalism of teaching as well. What concessions do you think that unions might have to make in order for the initiative to meet that particular target? Well, unions are committed to improving the quality of education. I mean, it will just make an example as, a, um, for instance, SATU in May launched a SATU Curtis and Gondo Professional Development Institute. So these are teachers who are members of the unions themselves investing in their own development, which is really remarkable. Mm -hmm. And even in this case, you know, we have, unions have been part of this process, not just SATU, but all the seven or eight teacher, you know, unions that operate in South Africa that are recognized in South Africa have committed to really meeting their end of the bargain. In other words, where you have, for instance, teacher development programs, teachers are going to attend, mm -hmm. not just attend, but also be measured in terms of whether or not they're, s they're showing any improvements in some of the interventions that relate to them particularly. So how have you positioned accountability uh, from all the stakeholders, whether it be the community, the profession, uh, the government, the private sector, the accountability that underpins a, a, a successful education system? Well. All the stakeholders have responsibility to do, to play their role. If you just take, for instance, parents. Parents, in a number of cases, no longer even check what's in the school bags of their children. It doesn't really even matter whether they can read or write. They mm -hmm. just need to be able to take interest in what's going on in the lives of their children at school. Unions have a responsibility clearly in terms of the law in South Africa. They're protected by Absolutely. the Constitution. But at the end of the day, they have a very important role to play in supporting this initiative and in seeing 
the improvement in the quality of education. So we are going to have very measurable things for all the stakeholders, which the trust will monitor as we implement these improvement programs.